Hello, welcome to Jaws and Possum After Hours. Here's a gimmick of the show. I will find games of a more adult variety, play them here at midnight and showcase them for you to enjoy. This will be censored for YouTube, but if you want to check out the uncensored videos, check out my link tree in the description below. That sounds cool, stick around and uh, let's get freaky. Oh my god, everybody, welcome to Tales of Androgyny. We're finally playing this game. Don't worry about this or this, because that could be anything, YouTube. That can be anything in the world. Nothing is actually showing. That doesn't even look like a girl penis. That's clearly a, just a very intricate cucumber. So you're the real perverts, actually. Anyway, yes, this is Tales of Androgyny. It's this um, gay RPG game I've been to play for quite some time now. And I've been in a lot of requests to play it right now. So now we're gonna actually play it. Uh, begin. Hair about censor a lot. I am prepared to have these be very short, potentially. <laughs> Onto the world of Tales of Androgyny. This is an alpha build. Some systems and many assets are not currently in place, so please don't expect this to be a full game experience. If you encounter any bugs, please let us know. Leave a comment. Yes, 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 yes. Some tutorials have to follow, hold control, hold control or hold down to s the skip button to skip in such a game mode. Okay. Combat is stance based. The three core stances are balance, offensive, and defensive. Abilities that you can use are determined by stance. Using them may result in a new stance. For example, using spirit attack and balance stance will leave you in offensive for the next round. Or using block will leave you defensive. Balance stance is a staging stance. Most abilities will move you into a new stance. It has balance, offensive, and defensive abilities. This is a lot being thrown at me um, before anything's actually happening. Oh my god. I'm trying to turn if anything's actually showing. Oh, stories for patrons only have to create a character, okay. Oh my god, are we a warrior? A paladin? A thief? A ranger? A mage? Or an enchanter? Sweet fuck. I don't know. I like playing as a thief. Let's do it. Oh my god. All these fucking icons down here. It's a whole fucking thing. Balanced. Face fucked. Felatio. Riding. Reverse cowgirl. Uh, are these all my skills? This is a lot. I sure was meant to censor like all these fucking icons. Good god. How many skills? Oh, I have five. Okay. The prone bone. I'm just hitting yes to things. I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, we have our perks. Yeah, we're stealthy and well rounded. Oh, we can upgrade Ass Eater up the fucking wazoo. Holy lord, there's so much to deal with. Um, Highlander, Mountain Man, Elf Blood, or Orc Blood, oh my god. There's so much going on. Lip Fullness, our butt size. We have a cute cock, a tiny cock, or a small, small average, okay. We have an adorable penis. Our breast size, oh my god, we're flat. I would be more masculine. Not particularly masculine. Androgynous. Effeminate. Girly. Or feminine. Be androgynous. Good lord. I'm already just like. This is already so much. Am I? Okay, I'm here. This is me. Okay, so we'll go. What's this mean? I think I'm stealthier now. Uh, <laughs> there's literally a whole button all about your ass. This is phenomenal. I, this is this is true immersion. Fuck Cyberpunk 2077. See, what if I just try not to get have sex? And here. It's gonna happen here. You're a where this area is scouting a success, okay. Uh, oh, oh, I didn't read, I did, I was, I was trying to check out something, oh god, I didn't read it, um. Let's avoid the werewolf. Cause we're a thief, we don't fight people. Okay. Um. Oh my goodness, I, Okay. There's a lot going on here. I guess we'll go here.
Oh my god. Didn't expect to come across anyone this deep into the forest, but I spot a female form, but as the light passes through it, realize that there's no way the thing before you is human. You approach cautiously. She isn't facing you. Once you get closer, you discern more details. She has a rather sizable rear, one that you could get lost in, quite literally, as she is made of slime. Though you suppose she could take any shape, which makes her current one quite suspect. Before you can inspect further, she turns to face you, and seeing you, jiggles excitedly. Her breasts are massive, far larger than any human woman would have. They move quite fluidly. Oh, a human! What brings you to my haunt? She asks, although as soon as she starts to approach, slithering across the ground, you reach for your weapon. What? what are you? You ask confused. That's a rather rude question, isn't it? I'm a slime, obviously. A sentient slime. Obviously. How are you speaking? Oh, well, that's a rather embarrassing question. She says, looking flustered, although she's still a translucent blue. As a non-sentient slime consumes sentient creatures, it starts to develop a mind of its own. That's me. Am I next, then? You ask accusingly. No, I haven't existed any human since I became, well, me. Always in self-defense, of course, she adds, looking somewhat sullen. Sentient slime goo is an expensive commodity, so I've come to learn. I so I do have to fend off the occasional poacher, she explains. Then why are you shaped like that? Because I'm a girl slime, of course. I mean, why are you that in particular? Are you my luxurious curves? You have to forgive me, I can't be pretty bubbly, she says, jiggling her entire form. Though she says that, she seems surprisingly sharp. Yes, why? Are you trying to entice men to their dooms? You ask accusingly. Why? Are you enticed? She asks, wiggling her hips. She sees that you are not amused by her response and size. I just prefer this form. It keeps me grounded, she says, shrugging. I have no interest in eating you or hmm, engaging in other primal behaviors. We don't reproduce that way, you see. Just pat the, fa the flat goo where her vagina would be. How do you reproduce? My, what a personal question. Love darts, since you ask. You leave her confused. Hmm, don't ask, she says. You said to drop that line of inquiry. If I were to want to, that would be my problem then. You ask, hand still on your weapon. Wouldn't be a problem at all. You wouldn't be the first. Oh, you think I ate them, don't you? No, not one. Some keep me gifts, others. I was just pleased to have the company. It doesn't do anything for me, but it doesn't hurt me either. I flow like water. What we do, fight, fuck, or flee? Fight her, smooch her, leave her be. Well, leave her be. Why would we, uh... I mean, there's no reason to fight her. She's just chilling here. Fucking her would be like... It doesn't do anything for her. And like... I'm not a taker. You know what I'm saying? Leave her be. Okay. Look at this fucking map, though. Damn, bro. This is a whole fucking thing. Shit's amazing. So much stuff going on. There's a girl here. What's up to the girl? Oh. Encounter. The camp is quiet. Just the crackling of the fire and the mournful whispers of the morning wind. The sun is not yet not crested the distant mountains yet, but in the dark and the sky is broken. Still, the world is dim. Your ears perk up. You hear a shifting in the grass that couldn't just be the wind. You track the source of the sound as the shuffling becomes more agitated, ready for a fight, dropping into a low, guarded stance. Something appears from within the grass and you tense. Oh! Oh, hello! You blink, emerging from the tall grass as a giant tortoise. It blinks back. It's carrying some kind of glowing lantern and strapped to its back is a basket full of glowing mushrooms. It's a very strange sight. Neither of you say anything. Well, you don't say anything. The tortoise is a tortoise. Hmm? You don't seem dangerous. I believe it's safe to come out. Uh... Kirala... Kilira... Kilira... Trying here, says the tortoise. You boggle before you could say anything that something else emerges from the grass. Oh... My... Fucking... God. This is like... This is nightmare fuel. This is haunting. Her, it's just her stare is just like the fucking kid from <laughs> fucking Finding Nemo. You chase over their form. Woman? Man? You can't tell. You can see from the shape of their ears, though, that they're some kind of fey folk. Likely an elf. They see her carrying a lantern, visible now that they're through the thick grass. They look slightly dis disheveled from traversing it, but hardly the picture of a graceful elegance that you expected from an, an elf, at least. They, they brush grass out of their hair and clothing, and then finally seem to notice you. Keen senses they do not have. Oh, I'm high, they say, and you shake your head in disbelief. Their voice is somewhat high and breathy, certainly feminine. They seem anxious to be standing there, or anywhere, really. Hi, you say in muted tones. Did that turtle speak to you? I'm a tortoise, actually, he says, and you pinch the bridge of your nose. 
Uh, oh, sorry, um, did you say your name was? Kalira, says the tortoise. And you are? You see to the small elf who seems to be uncomfortable. Uh, I'm Kalira, they say ha ha helpfully. And you are? Says so the tortoise. A tortoise. Fucking hell. Okay, I'm Hero. Why are you traveling so early in the morning? Tortoise opens his mouth to speak and you shush it. It closes its mouth looking indignant or not. It doesn't really have any facial expressions. Not you. Kalira. Kalira plays with the hem of her dress. I um, prefer to travel at night so there aren't as many people on the roads. You nod. That's dangerous for a young elf, isn't it? Kylira averts their gaze. Yes, but I, I don't do well around people. And uh, doesn't that tortoise slow you down? I'm quick enough, he says defiantly, and you roll your eyes. I won't get in your way then, you say, trying to extract yourself from the situation. You, had, you turn to head back to your campfire. Well, wait, would you like some mushrooms? I'd be willing to share some with you, hero. You wouldn't mind some free mushrooms, although the way she, they glow is a little concerning. Uh. Uh, decline. Rando mushrooms from some fucking stranger in the woods? No thanks. No thanks. I'm all set. Oh, uh, well, that's fine. Well, goodbye for now, then. If we come across each other again, maybe we'll be in a better mood. I just don't accept fucking stranger mushrooms, okay? Towards the sounds, the two of them continue on their way past you. You watch them disappear into the, get into the grass. Oh my god. Let's look at a town. Oh my goodness. Town Square. The map is so cool. There's so many cool places to go and things to do. You went to the town square. It's fairly quiet, although some night owls are still going about their errands and their troubles and their tricks. There doesn't seem to be too much going on. Perhaps it'd be better if you returned during the day. I guess we should go to the inn and rest up. It's late in the day. Visit the town's inn, looking for a place to spend the night. And you have a hearty meal, the better to brave the trail with. The embers of dust sit on the horizon as you cross over into a shadow-filled alley, at the end of which is the entrance of the inn. A sign that reads Vegacy, lit by a sconce. Lit by a sconce, or lit by a torch in the sconce? Okay. You push open the door to a dim, diff diffusely lit room. The front desk ahead with the hallway to your left. The ceiling is low and you can hear a, th a thumping on the floor above, and small movements in the rooms beyond. You approach the heavy wooden desk, em empty aside from a single candle holder and a block of knocking wood, and meet the innkeeper, an older woman with a vaguely friendly smile, and tells you that the cost for a night alone is ten gold, but she says she might be willing to make an exception in exchange for some work. That was such a fucking long sentence. Holy sh- that's one sentence. There's no break. Uh, so rest of the inn requires ten gold, uh, low funds requires... Okay. Where's the end lie about funds? Alright, all these require other things, so you can only do this. How do you bunk? Oh, you need some friends or an orc slave, I guess. Alright, where's our gold, by the way? You stack ten gold onto the front desk, and the innkeeper counts them by producing a second stack that weighs the ten. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Alright, well rested. Cool. Town square. Now that it's the next day. The hustle and bustle of the town gives you a nostalgic feeling. The townspeople are talkative. You may be able to glean from them more about the goings-on. So too could the town crier, boastfully regaling a half-interested crowd. Listen to the town crier. Hear ye, hear ye, cries the town crier, being asymptomatically original. You hear him, hear him, for at least long enough to find out there's anything going on you can tackle to prove yourself. At the summit of Zhu Mountain, there's an ancient creature that's been terrorizing the land for ages. Lord Vessel has offered the princely sum of 300 sovereign gold coins to any who can fell the beast, split amongst agreed upon parties. Sounds promising, it's not the sort of heroic feat that the bards will sing about for years to come. Is that what I'm interested in? I fit the thief. It said that those with the blessing of the goddess can slay the god of the mountain, so I spread the word to all ye faithful, and all ye know, to find those so brave and so pious and so mighty that the monster has no choice but to give up his lifeblood unto them. You hope you fit the description. Zoo Mountain. You don't know much about it, or the supposed lord of it, so you think trying to find someone who does might prove fruitful. Alright, that's a request, I think. Go to the store? You produce the shop. Alright. We have 60 gold, okay. Some health potions, bandages, steel mode. I don't know how to steal. Let's steal some shit. I stole the meat. Oh my god. Just like that. Okay. I just grabbed the first thing I could fucking see. Shit. Uh, church? Enter the old chapel warily, so feeling slight unease at the somber and silent mood within. The sense is musty, and large windows are covered with drapes that are nearly closed, leaving only slivers of light cast across a few candles and tomes. 
There's only one other person within. You see her kneeling in the prayer pa posture before the statue of Is. Huh? Approach wordlessly. Oh my god. There's a lot going on here. Are you Buffy? Speak. She doesn't turn and look at you. You see through her eyelashes that she is actually peering at you. Her expression stern. I'm here. I was wondering if there's any troubles the church might be facing. Demons, fiends, anything I could help with. Are you a cleric? She says you silently and closes her eyes as if to finish her prayer. She rises to her feet and she has a somewhat imposing stature. Her outfit, while suitably displaying religious iconography, does not resemble that of a cleric. Her breasts are large and surprisingly exposed, and her hips flare out visibly, constrained only by thin straps of leather that draw the eyes more than anything. I am the holy warrior Isla, she says, clenching her fist and holding it aloft. I need not a faithless sellsword to steal the cleanseless land of impurity. With respect, search elsewhere for your glory. She opens her fist and brings her hand back in, resting it on her hip. You catch, for a brief moment, the general shape of her lower body armor. Quickly glance away, noting her shell-shackled codpiece. If she notices your inspection, she doesn't remark on it. She does seem to notice your face, however, looking at it now directly for the first time. Hmm. But I should not turn away someone who's willing to help, so as long as it is understood that there is no guarantee of a reward or fame in it. You nod. There's nothing to be lost by hearing by hearing her out. The creatures of the night are seldom very bold and often full of guile. They hide amongst us and it can be difficult, if not impossible, to tell them from a man of purity. Just as she accidentally f- Just her cheeks turn red, she furrows her eyebrows in alarm and pretends to cough into her hands, staring off the empty pews while gathering her thoughts. W what I mean to say is that I cannot sniff them all out. If you could assist in that, that would be a meaningful contribution. Again, I promise nothing, you should expect nothing. She folds her arms over her chest and cocks her hip. She means it, apparently, straight away looking down at her codpiece. If that's understood, then, I'll make myself available to you. If you have any questions about Friends of the Night, then come ask me. Ask them of me. She dusts the strap on her hip, trailing her finger under it before snapping it back into place, and then again on the other side. Although it's clear, then, that she's adjusting something within the codpiece, and you look back up at her face, hopefully before she notices. And if you see any handsome fiends, be sure to tell me. What? What? She flushes again, but you can tell that the hand resting on her hip once again is tempted to move. An awkward silence passes. That was a joke. It's no concern whether fiends are handsome or pretty. If they are, they could be useful information for hunting purposes, so you should tell me. And if I see ugly fiends? Well, then tell me anyway. Our tastes might differ. What? What? Another awkward pause. This time she seems flustered enough and upset enough to speak again almost immediately. I destroy the wicked creatures of the night. I don't... You haven't heard the rumors, have you? What rumors? No rumors. There aren't There aren't any rumors, that's all. If you have any questions, I'll be here or in my chambers. May is bless you, she says, turning around. You watch her shapely rears and the rest of her disappear through a stone doorway, leaving you alone in the chapel. Well, that was an experience. I enjoyed. Immensely. The blacksmith. Oh no, poor blacksmith guy. You don't exist. I guess I haven't been to the brothel yet, so... Whoa, slow down there, partner. What you're about to watch is, uh, not very safe for YouTube. But if you want to check out the very full scene of what you're about to miss, go to the link tree in the description below and you can, uh, you can watch the whole thing. Uninterrupted. Well, she was an absolute hoot and a treasure. Well, I'm gonna say that's that for, uh, Tales of Androgyny for now. Uh, interesting concept so far. I think that it's definitely, uh, there's a lot, that kind of typical, like, everything's hypersexualized writing about it, but, uh, so far it seems to be alright. I mean, there has been a lot of, like, giving you the lewd pretty early, but it seems like it's a world that's very just hypersexualized in the first place, but, um, I mean, hey, no sex scenes yet, um, though I'm sure there's been some, an some instances where we could have probably had it already, but... I always try to avoid it, you know me, it's my, it's my, it's my bit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Tales of Androgyny. I'm only recording this one episode for now, so if you want more, please leave a comment down below and like the video and share it around if you do want more. Uh, subscribe for more content like this, other loot games, and also non-loot games that we play. YouTube does not want to monetize this, so if you enjoy the content you see, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Jocelyn Possum. I only have one tier, it's one dollar, you can support me on there. Uh, nothing too, nothing like crazy, like special just for patrons, more so just like, like updates on what I'm editing. But it's more just a way to support me, because YouTube doesn't want to fucking pay me any, any money for all my hard work. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day everybody, and uh, stay Jocelyn out there.
she needs to sort out her priorities.